name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. And you're all very welcome to St. Faulkner's Church, Ross Carberry, County Cork, on the 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time. We come to a celebration of our Mass. We remind ourselves now of our own failings. We ask the Lord for pardon of our strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, from my fault, from my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those who set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. First reading. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear so many disparaging me, terror from every side. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All those who used to be my friends watched for my downfall. Perhaps he will be seduced into error. Then we will master him and take our revenge. But the Lord is at my side, a mighty hero. My opponents will stumble, mastered, confounded by their failure. Everlasting, unforgettable disgrace will be theirs. But you, Lord of hosts, you who probe with justice, who scrutinize the lions in heart, let me see the vengeance you will take on them for i have committed my cause to you sing to the lord praise the lord for he has delivered the soul of the needy from the hands of evil men the word of the lord god fills me with joy from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Sin entered the world through one man, and through sin death, and thus death has spread through the whole human race because everyone has sinned. Sin existed in the world long before law was given. There was no law, and so no one could be accused of the sin of law-breaking. Yet death reigned over all from Adam to Moses. Even though their sin, unlike that of Adam, was not a matter of breaking a law. Adam prefigured the one to come, but the gift itself considerably outweighed the fall. If it is certain that through one man's fall so many died, it is even more certain that divine grace coming through the one man, Jesus Christ, came to so many as an abandoned free gift. The word of the Lord. 
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus instructed the twelve as follows. Do not be afraid, for everything that is now covered will be uncovered, and everything now hidden will be made clear. What I say to you in the dark, tell the daylight. What you hear in whispers, proclaim from the housetops. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Fear him, rather, who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Can you not buy two sparrows for a penny, and yet not one falls on the ground without your father knowing? Why, every hair on your head has been counted, so there is no need to be afraid. You are worth more than hundreds of sparrows. So if anyone declares himself for me in the presence of people, I will declare myself for him in the presence of my father in heaven. But I, the one who disowns me in the presence of people, I will disown in the presence of my Father in heaven. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body. My dear friends, there was a famous 16th century Carmelite nun, St. Teresa of Avila, and she is known for her work away to perfection. And for St. Teresa, life wasn't all sunshine. She was a member of this Carmelite community, and she tried to bring reform to the monastery. But her words fell on deaf ears. She was totally rejected by her companions. In fact, she left the community. But on the day she was leaving, it happened to be a very wet, wintry morning. And I'm afraid there was no charity given to her that day. She found herself on the side of a road, desolate conditions. But she always had great trust in the Lord. She never gave up. And her prayer that particular day was, Lord, if this is the way you treat your friends, it's so no wonder that you have so few friends. But St. Teresa never gave up, and she went back to her community. The door was open to her again, and at this time, she was welcomed. And eventually, the community welcomed her and welcomed her in the way of perfection. And today, we're hearing in the Gospel about the Lord asking his disciples not to be afraid, because sometimes the message is not heard. Sometimes when the gospels went out, when the preachers went out to preach the gospel, they were totally rejected. And to this day, the gospel is still being rejected by, by many people. We're, not, we're told not to be afraid. And I suppose when people are afraid, they are silent. They're afraid to make moves. And sometimes they put up with horrible situations in their own homes and in their own communities, afraid to speak up. The bully always seems to be in charge. The abuser is always seems to be in uncontrol. And today, we are given the light to come forward, to go out and proclaim the good news, proclaim our freedom. It is shocking to be hemmed in by problems of this world, by being controlled by people, by husbands, by wives, by your children, by the community. The bully seems to be in control at times. So today we are told to stand up and speak the truth, because when we speak the truth, the gospel is being proclaimed. It's alive. It should be alive in our own homes. It should be alive in our own community. We are given the strength and the courage to stand up today. We are told, yes, at times we will be rejected. But the Lord says, don't fear, he will back us, he will support us. 
as the Lord supports us, St. Teresa, today we're asking the Lord to support us, especially people who are in most need, to stand up and take courage and be brave and to come forward to let the truth be known. Let's now stand for our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now come before God, who knows all our strengths and our failings, and pray for the church and the world. We pray for all who offer themselves to work in and for God's church, visiting those who are unable to attend church, and making sacrifices of their time and resources. Lord, hear us. We pray for all missionaries and teachers, particularly those who teach and work with children, ensuring their grounding in the Christian faith. Lord, hear us. We pray for the world, for its nations and leaders, that its divisions and hostilities may be healed and that peace will reign. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who are suffering from illness or disease, at home or in hospital, and for all those waiting anxiously for the results of medical investigations or tests. Lord, hear us. Heavenly Father, Lord, we, when you know our thoughts and emotions and motives, and so in your mercy, hear our prayers. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who help us to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash me my iniquity, clean me from my sins. Let us pray now that our sacrifice of the bread and wine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in our hands to the praise and glory of his name for our benefits and the benefits of the whole church. 
Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action we may be offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for through his paschal mystery, he accomplished a marvellous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and the archangels, with the thrones and the millions, with the hosts of power of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis of Hope, Fenton, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we now say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all the distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now look into our own hearts for peace for ourselves, peace with our families, peace for, for our community. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And in his name, the body of Christ, bring us to everlasting life. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. Say but the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Christ bring us to everlasting life. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. I am the good shepherd, and I lay down my life, my life for my sheep, says the Lord. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask your mercy, O Lord, that we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go now in peace to love and to serve the Lord.